Today, I'm going to discuss bootstrapping, which is a particular type of non-parametric method. Non-parametric methods are becoming much more popular for statistical inference, meaning confidence intervals or hypothesis testing. Tests that involve assumptions around the normal distribution or the t-distribution or f-distribution are called parametric tests. In non-parametric methods, we don't have to make distributional assumptions. The non-parametric methods we're talking about today are typically based on computer simulations instead of distributional assumptions. And thus, they're particularly useful when our distribution may not truly follow a normal RT distribution. And that happens when the sample data are skewed or when the sample size is small. The techniques we're talking about today are called resampling techniques. Because they use computer iteration to repeat the process of sampling over and over again. These resampling techniques are very different than other non-parametric techniques you may have learned about, such as Shapiro-Wilkes or Kruskal-Wallace, which tend to not be as accurate as several parametric tests are under various conditions. One really nice thing about non-parametric methods is that we don't need assumptions. For example, you may know that we do hypothesis tests around the mean because the central limit theorem tells us that the mean is going to be normally distributed as long as your sample size is large enough. However, we don't have a theorem that applies to the distribution of the median or to the correlation coefficient. Because of this, it's much more difficult to do any kind of parametric test for the median or the correlation. However, we can very easily do non-parametric tests for any parameter we're interested in. One key thing to remember about the bootstrap method is that it samples with replacement, meaning it draws one observation, one unit, records the value, puts it back, and then draws a second sample. So the key idea of bootstrapping is that we take one simple random sample from a population. We then take many samples of this sample with replacement. And then we calculate a statistic with each sample that we take. We calculate a statistic of interest and then use that to generate what we call a bootstrap distribution. In terms of assumptions, in both parametric and non-parametric tests, we have to assume that each sample represents the population. Typically, we say that we have independent and identically distributed sample data which means each sample observation is independent from the other sample observations and that our population of interest doesn't change, like the mean or the median isn't changing uh, while we're conducting the test. The population is centered in the same place for, throughout the entire study. Just as in parametric tests, we do need to make sure the sample re represents the population. However, we do not need to make any assumptions about the center, shape, or spread the items we typically use parameters for to evaluate or describe a distribution. I'm going to use this really nice online app to give you a visual representation of what's going on in the bootstrap. So this should really model what you did in your lab. So first of all, we're going to just assume we have one sample of size 10. So let's say I was conducting a study and I was really interested in knowing how many times students are looking on their phone or checking their phone while I'm giving a lecture. So let's say I hire people to just visually watch particular students in the class. We have maybe cameras set up on, on 10 different students. And so we record during the class and we have 10 observations where we know exactly how many times these students check their phone. This probably would be a study where I would need IRB approval, which is the Institutional Review Board. It's something that I'm not allowed to do freely in my classes, so I have a limited sample and I don't really know about the population. So what I'm going to do is follow these same steps that we just talked about. I have this one sample and I'm going to use this one sample to create a bootstrap distribution. Once I have a bootstrap distribution, then I can create confidence intervals. In this app, I have the sample data. As you saw, there was one student who checked their phone 
31 times, another student checked it three times, another student checked it five times. What the bootstrap does is it has this one sample and we are going to take another sample of exactly size 10 because our sample size is 10, we wanna take a sample size of 10. So we randomly select 10 observations. And notice in the process of bootstrapping, sometimes samples are never selected, sometimes samples are selected more than once. We conduct a resample of the data and calculate the mean. And then we repeat the process. Again, we randomly conduct a resample and calculate the mean of that resample. One more time. Calculating a resample. That was my third resample. Each time the resample looks a little different and we observed again a new mean based on this resample. Now we can repeat that process. Let's just repeat it five times. So we're going to do it automatically. They automatically did five resamples and calculated this. And so we're starting to see what the possible distribution looks like of X bars. We're not looking at the distribution of an individual time. We're looking at the distribution of the average time. Let's repeat that five more times, five more times, five more times, five more times. Uh, let's do it 10,000 times and 10,000 more times. And what do we see? We see a distribution. So what we are assuming is that if our sample truly represents a population, which we don't know, we think this resampling technique over and over again will give us a good estimate of what the distribution of all sample means would look like. Now I'm going to change my statistic of interest. Maybe I'm interested in the median time. So if I look here in my population, the median time was 22.5. I'm gonna sample 10 observations from my sample, doing the resample, and then I calculate the median of those 10. Let's do it again. Sample 10 observations, and then calculate the new median. Again, we can pre repeat this over and over again. Let's do it 100,000 times. And what do we see? The median does not follow a normal distribution. It doesn't look nice and normally distributed. Because of this, we can't use the central limit theorem, and thus we can't use the T distribution or the Z distribution to calculate confidence intervals. However, we can use the percentile method to calculate a 95% confidence interval for the median. And that's what's really nice about this technique. No matter which technique we're interested in, let's say we're interested in the standard deviation. We can take a sample, calculate the standard deviation, repeat that, take another sample of size 10, so we calculate a sample of size 10. These all seem to be fairly close together. So we had a relatively small standard deviation. If we do that 10,000 times, there's 100,000 samples. Again, this doesn't look normally distributed. The central limit theorem only holds for the mean. But we can create a 95% confidence interval using percentiles, and that would tell us that we are 95% confident that the true population standard deviation falls within this interval. So we can make inferences about the population distribution just based on this one sample.